This week's episode is brought to you by Tabletop Backer Party on Facebook, which is the largest board game crowdfunding group on this side of the internet. Hello everyone, welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter with Glory Hound and... Dr. Glory Hog. Hopefully we don't have any lag issues. If not, we will stop and then record the show for you guys. But I do see Battle Cry in chat. Mm -hmm. I think we had John C. on earlier, and there was somebody else, right? Was yeah. there somebody else on earlier? I don't know, guys. Everybody's using the internet right now for some weird, weird reason. I don't know why. It looks like I have like five devices connected right now, I think, technically. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, I closed them. Are you them. using our internet right now? No, I closed them. <laughs> I'm saying like our kid's doing her homework from here. I'm doing my work from here. I had my own personal laptop up, you know. Uh, Fatal Paper Cuts says, which stream is the live one? I got three or four notifications for the live streams. Yeah, apologies on that. Like That's what happens every time we have to reset it. It's, uh, so sad, so sad. We'll delete all the other ones out. This will become Absolutely. the one. If, if you see us talking, then you're on the live stream, okay? <laughs> They're all live. There's three or four different realities. You never know which one you're in. In one reality, I'm the host. What? One reality. Wow, don't happen. get all physics-y up in here. We're going to wait just a few more minutes, and go ahead and let us know how the stream is doing, just to make sure that we are not like robots right now. That could be one reality, the robots. The robot reality? Yeah. What do, what do you think uh, is do going on? Do the robot on? again, and I'll watch on No. <laughs> what do you think is going on with Kickstarter right now? So. Oh, yeah, see, look, your robot looks just fine. I just saw you, robot. It? My robot looks just yeah. fine. I mean, for your robot, yeah, it did fine. <laughs> It's all good. Found you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Fatal Paper Cut. So, with Kickstarter, we saw Lost Atlantis. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Lost Atlantis as we get started, as people start coming in and everything. Let's switch on over here. So, with Lost Atlantis, this was a Kickstarter by a big company, AEG, and... Never All of a sudden, of never heard you've of never them. heard of AEG. Never heard of <laughs> Whatever. them. Whatever. <laughs> no, I've heard of them. So they they weren't even out a full week. They were out, I don't know, like three days, four days, three days. I think it happened on Tuesday, and then they canceled on Thursday. Yeah, they it canceled pretty much right after you did your Dice Tower bit where you were showcasing the different games, and all of a sudden it was, they were gone. I'm wondering how many more companies are going to do this, and I wonder how many more companies are actually going to even launch at this time. I think a bunch are not launching. Like, I was asking Tricking the World, because we know them, and I was like, are you going to launch for sure still? And he was like, yeah, I'm still going to. But I, I wasn't sure if he was going to, because so many time, so many other, other companies are postponing their launches. Ba yeah, basically, I went ahead and looked at our list of sponsors and stuff like that that we get from Tabletop Backer Group, and a bunch of them were cut. A bunch of them went ahead and moved their stuff around and everything. So it looks like, I mean, there's people are not going to be launching a whole bunch of Kickstarters. And if they are, I think they're maybe going to be lower price Kickstarters here soon. Because this looked like a really great Kickstarter. I was super excited. I don't know if you guys even had a chance to see this. It looks like they took down even the stuff for it. They had, like, these awesome little range rulers of, like, where your submarines were going to go and everything. I was really excited to see this one. Yeah, and it got, um, it was funded first day, too. So this is, so there's two parts to this. Of course, there's the COVID-19, which is just stopping people from spending in general. But the other aspect is Kickstarter companies setting their campaign set up so where that they'll fund in the first, like, hour. But then they go, uh, you know what? We're not trending as well as we want to. We're going to cancel. So is that because they were afraid that, because of COVID-19, they weren't going to get more than, like, extra super funded? Or did they just set their goal super low? And then they actually needed to hit, like, say, 50000 but they set their goal at, like, 16000 instead? That's a really good question because... I know. I'm not, like, super excited about companies doing that, you know? The idea Does that seem kind of shady? I don't know. I You guys in the chat, go ahead and let us know what you guys feel about that. Because companies setting their funding goal super low, I can understand that gets them rolling and everything. But canceling in the middle of a campaign that's already funded and stuff like that, people yeah. have expectations for it to go through, you know? And I think that's the issue. If, if the campaign's already, it's one thing if the campaign's not funded and then they drop, right? Then you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> but if it's funded and then they drop it within like, and they've got weeks to go, you're like, you're already funded. Why did you drop? Like there, that always brings about questions for me. I personally do not like that. <laughs> Fatal Paper Cut says, Funded 1,312% in 86 seconds. Exactly. Their, their funding like, goal was 5 cents. 
It's like so a like dollar a, funding goal. <laughs> a dollar funding goal. So if one person, I've actually seen that where people have done like that for um, like more like RPGs and stuff where their goal is like a dollar or for uh, printed files. And they're like, so their goal is like a dollar. And I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're 1300% like funded. I'm like, oh, okay. They've, they've got like 10 backers. It's just because their goal was a buck. Yeah. And it looks like there's a big old thing with everybody talking about it and stuff like here in the comments and everything. So I'm just interested if we're going to see more of this happen in the future where we, companies we, are making sure that although, I mean, Kickstarter is somewhat risky still, you know, because you could just not get really great numbers and then all of a sudden you're shelling out extra money for games because they were interested in a higher volume and they were going to get a better price on all that, you know? Right. I mean, I could see that. The idea, though, you're supposed to set it up to where if it funds, you can make the game. Right. You're not supposed to set it up where it's like, if it funds times seven, then we can afford to make this game. <laughs> and I could see if they were like, okay, it funded, but it's not as good as we wanted to. So, they, you know, obviously you don't put stretch goals in or right. whatever. But if it's funded, you should be able to make the game. I just game. want my game. <laughs> you might not make as much profit as you want, but it should be funded. It should be made. All right. So, in the chat, you guys, let me know what you guys think. If you are going to continue backing Kickstarters where they cancel funding in the middle of a campaign just because they haven't been funded enough. It's understandable from a business point of view, but from a consumer point of view, I mean, it looks kind of bad. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, there's like another company that just because of the way they're acting on Kickstarter, it seems like their last project didn't fund very well at all. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's because like after a while, people start to get leery of certain companies that oh, kind of stay absolutely. away. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That happens. All right. Let's move on to actually Kickstarters that are legit and going on right now and we're super excited about. So first off here we have Aquanauts. This is by Inside the Box Board Games. This is for two to four players. It's going to last about 45 to 60 minutes. This is going to be more of a worker placement game with a little bit of engine building because as you're placing your workers in different facilities and stuff, you're going to be gaining things from those facilities, making your own little facility area in front of you. And when you're doing that, you uh, the main facility in front of you, like you're building up your engine and that and stuff. And then basically what you're trying to do is just get super renowned in science. This is my favorite part of this. You're right. trying to get super renowned in science to become like science famous. <laughs> Is what you're trying to do in this game. Right, and you're working together <laughs> to a certain aspect where, like, wherever you place your oh, stuff yeah. actually helps everybody, but then there's still, like, that one person who donates the most, right? I thought that was really interesting, too, because as you're placing your stuff next to each other, it will benefit the other people around you, which I thought was a really, really interesting method to have with the worker placement. Does that make sense? So if you do your job right, you're just the second best scientist that just always <laughs> reaps the rewards, and then you actually do nothing. You just leech. And then at the end, you, you just, might not win the game, but didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't did you? you really win? I mean, come on now. You're like, yeah, you're science famous, but you're like, I don't know. It's like you're, um, you're Sherlock, and I could be Holmes, right? It's like I don't have to be super intelligent. I just got to be like hanging out with you. Be like, hey, what's up, Sherlock? What are we up to? <laughs> We, uh, we solved some crimes. We're going to go see the queen. Good job. High five. Boom. Don't touch. Oh, oh sorry. Jeez. Sorry, God. Gosh. Sorry. Marcus, <laughs> I didn't know where you, you were preach. social distancing. If we're social distancing inside here, I need you a little bit further away from me. Okay, Dr. Glory Hog? I don't know what you're... You're going to have to no, not no. breathe directly into my face. <laughs> I, ate, I ate cold spaghetti for breakfast. No, you didn't. We warmed it up. All right. Well, I ate spaghetti for breakfast. It's, it's getting sad. It's getting sad. <laughs> <laughs> I like spaghetti for breakfast. I don't care. So what are your thoughts about this game, Dr. Gloria? So it looks pretty cool, actually. Uh, like, Because I like underwater, unlike you. I don't. I don't like underwater. Underwater is scary, guys. If you're not I afraid... I would rather explore no, hold on. underwater than explore space where everything kills you. Underwater, most things kill you. If you're not afraid of the deep, you're not doing it right because the deep is a scary, scary place. What are you talking about? The so same dark. Thing, the same thing happens in the deep if you get out of... The submarine in the deep, like, you could just be crushed by the force of, like, the ocean and underneath water and bad stuff happens still. But it's like, dark. It's you won't notice. Like, it's the same thing. Well, it's dark in space, too. No, there's all those lights. <laughs> what are they called? Stars? <laughs> is, is space super dark? You'd almost think it'd be pretty light because there's all those stars. No? That's not how that no, works? No, it's pretty vast and dark and cold. Huh. It's, it's pretty much the same thing, except, like, there's not scary sea monsters running around space trying to eat you. Space worms. 
There's so many. If space there were worms. space worms, like creepy space worms, just floating around in space, I would be less excited about space, guys. Okay, I'm just saying. If there was something like this guy here in space, this fish, Anglerfish? whatever thing, yeah, that. Oh, you fish? know there is. No, there's some alien species that cruises around with like a little light, and people are like, "Oh, is that a sun?" And then. <laughs> Just eat you. No. No, I'm that not happens. down with that. I'm not down with that. Space Stop being a baby. is not as scary as the ocean, period. I don't know. We watched that one Netflix episode, and it was like everything they did out in space got them killed. <laughs> space has, like, gamma rays and stuff, though, right? Where you're, like, you, like, you're not paying attention. All of a sudden, you just get zapped, and you're just dead. Blech. There's, like, a 0.009% chance, though, superhuman powers. No? No. No? <laughs> no. I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere superhuman powers from gamma rays. The thing about the ocean is it's totally safe as long as your eyes are closed. So Fatal Paper Kit says, what, then on the top of it, you see some huge shadow in the distance. Nope. See, Fatal Paper Cut is 100% with me on this. No, I just want a big, no ocean. No ocean. No. All right, I'm, feel, I'm done with the ocean. How do you I'm feel sorry. about beaches? I'm, I, I'm okay outside the beach. On, on the sand of the beach. You, there's lots of stuff you can do on the sand. You're like such guys. a baby. <laughs> All right, so with this game, though, the deep. Let's go into the deep. Yeah, right. No, I think that's actually cool. I've always thought that that's where we need to actually expand to first is going to be civilization underwater. I think that's next for humanity. I don't think we're going to go up into space. I think it's more likely we're going to build plexiglass homes under the ocean. Especially if the, if the water keeps rising. It would make sense. It would make sense as far as, like, keeping things cooler and everything. So, with this one here, we, we already discussed kind of the fact that when you're placing your workers and everything around there, the different areas, you're going to benefit from those if you're around there, which I think is interesting. You're basically, I mean, it's very fundamentally worker placement where you're placing workers, you're getting resources, then you're trying to buy certain tiles, to construct your in, on your own facility board, which is your engine portion of it. And then once that gets going, then you're able to send your research data up to the surface on that. Right, and then it's got the stuff that you're used to, which is like you can either specialize in one type of fish or you can kind of go diverse and try to get more like more renowned by hitting up different species and everything. And so it's got that kind of thing going for that you're used to. And it does look like it does look like there's actually a submarine that you fill up and you send it up to collect I know, goals. the sub, little submarine submersible boards here and stuff and research field boards That's are pretty super legit. cute. Those are super cute. They did a good job with it, guys. Like, the game looks fantastic. And this is from Inside the Box, which I haven't played a whole lot of stuff from them. Yeah, they've done you at know? least, well, I think they're at like 10 Kickstarters now or something. Yeah, and Battle Cry says, floating cities like Underworld. That's what I'm talking like about. Waterworld, you know? yeah. Yeah, or, sorry, Waterworld. Um, you're thinking about the under city, underwater cities is what you're thinking of. Right, like... But wasn't there some science, like, thing where they did an actual, like, house underwater and it was better because... Yes, it was that scientific movie called Deep Blue. No, no. There's some scientific, scientific movie thing called about Deep it. Deep Blue and also the Megalodon <laughs> movie. The Megalodon movie also had an underwater thing like that where they're, like, underwater and the Megalodon's like, I'm underwater's a big shark. Better. No, underwater's Bonk. better because it blocks UV rays and stuff like that yeah, going yeah. in. Oh, and then you're it talking insulates about, better and stuff. You're talking and... about that discovery thing we watched that was like, what would happen at the end of the world? Or how would humans survive? Yeah. Like, like if all the global so, warming stuff happened. Water world, but underwater is how it should be, right? It would just be underwater. I don't think you need to be like, water world, underwater. I think No, it would because just you be... still have the underworld. Or, sorry, the water no, world stuff. Okay, so there's two totally different things. Water world <laughs> is the oceans have risen so that you are on top of the water because there's not a lot of land left. But I'm saying... Hold on, let me finish. Oh, my God. Oh, so my God, So water world guys. is you're on top because there's not a lot of land. If you go underwater, it's because you're trying to escape the, the harsh sun because our ozone layer is gone. And because the earth has gotten too hot, so you have to be underwater but both, in order. But both. Like, no, if that because happens, if you're on the top of the water. Freeze. Yes, but if you're on top <laughs> of the water, you're still getting really hot. If you're under the water, so one's for heat, one's for just loss of land. They can both happen, but realistically, underwater would be better if you're trying to block heat. That is 100% two exactly separate what I'm movies. saying. That's, I, that's, no, I'm not talking about movies. They're I'm two saying separate what's the concepts. better one. I'm under. What, you know what? Under. You know what? Under. This is done. This is done. This conversation is done. Under. Under. Just gill it up. Gill it up. All right. So, Fatal Paper Cut says the components look pretty sweet. And Fatal Paper Cut's saying gills. Let's see here. We got, I don't know. I don't really have a whole lot of extra 
like I don't there's nothing bad that looks bad about this game. This game is $46. So you're looking in that $50 range and everything for it. What? Everyone would die after the first person said they needed to get a smoke and they open the door and let all the water in. <laughs> that was, that's probably true. That's probably true. That's how he would well, work. Don't, you don't We're so do smart. That. We could build this advanced civilization. <laughs> we could build a civilization in space and somebody would open the door because they like got to take a whiz or something. They'd get drunk. Open the door. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I think I'd still rather be flooded and at least have the hope that I can make it to the surface and then die within like a minute than get sucked into space and just instant freeze. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So, I yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about this game. This game looks fantastic. It's exciting. I like the worker placement portion of it. I have it. stuff to say about it. What do you have to say about it? The thing that's confusing that I think people have talked about is the different pledge levels and stuff. So like I understand the pl one pledge level, you're gonna get the basic game, right? And that doesn't seem bad. I think that one's the cheapest one. Then the next level one, it looks like you're getting buildings. And then like the next level, which is like 30 bucks more, it's like you're getting an extra submersible like board or something. I don't understand like the jump between Aquanaut and Pioneer. Like what are you actually getting that's so exp like so exclusive? Right, because you're getting robot and building miniatures with the second level, but you, then you also get the HSE submersible model, and people are saying, "Well, the game's not even finished, so how are you offering like the submersible modu uh, module and like the rule book hasn't been posted yet and stuff like that?" So that's what people are kind of talking about those aspects of it. Okay, it so like they're they having a little it. concern about like the different pledge levels and where they're at in having all this come through. I have to admit, I like the visual pledge levels where you see like this is what you get with this one, and then there's another box that says, and then with this one you get and this. And then with this level, you get and this. So you're like, oh, okay, you can see the different levels of what you're actually getting. Mm. This one, you it's a lot harder to see. I mean, they've got in a little infographic there, but it's very tiny. And it doesn't really, I mean, I'm not going to spend 30 bucks to get an HSC submersible. I don't even know what that is, let alone going to spend 30 bucks on it, right? Well, it sounds like it's actually going to be like it better be an, an actual model thing. But like they don't show the model. They just show a little card. That's the only difference is a one extra little card. Right. And that if a die punch board, interesting. Says fatal paper cut. So I oh, don't and know. this whole thing is being made out of like biodegradable plastics, like plant plastics. Oh, that's so awesome. people were talking about. Well, some people were talking about wouldn't they biodegrade faster than regular plastic? And yes, they would technically, but like in compost type scenarios, like not just like in your garage or in your house. Yeah, if you're keeping your board games in really hot, moist environments, like with then like layers yes. of sediment on top of them, yeah, and then air yes, and, and, and microorganisms to break them down, that would probably be bad. Probably don't bury your game components, is what we're saying. <laughs> don't bury them. If you bury them, they might that's break the down. That's the way. That's the next way I'm going to get you a gift, a board game gift, is I'm going to be like somewhere in the yard. There's a board game. Go find it. Treasure hunt. There's easier ways to get me to dig for sprinklers. I feel like. <laughs> There isn't, but that would actually probably work. You should be like, then I buried a pack of magic cards somewhere out in the yard, and I would just be like digging, and then you'd be like, just oh be my like god, I made it in the backyard. Packs, the individual packs You're like, on not there. in the side yard. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, battle cry. What's the rotting smell? Oh, it's Aquanauts. It's yeah, Aquanauts. It's just, it's fine. It's just it's fine. decomposing. Throw an old banana in there with the board, I guess. I don't no, know. I think it's actually cool. I think them making more people need to use plastics. Responsibly. Recycled plastics in different ways so we can continue like cleaning up the environment and stuff. So I think that's really cool and it applies to the game and everything. I, I guess think that's a good idea. if the game was trash, it wouldn't just end up in the compost for like another thousand years, which is true. Think about it. For a thousand years from now, people will still be being able to play like Monopoly and stuff because like those trash pieces will still be around. Little hotels. Those little Monopoly hotels, all of a sudden you're playing like Aquanauts with your Monopoly hotels because you don't yeah. have them anymore. <laughs> I'm just thinking about archaeologists that come along like a thousand years later. Like these oh. people are really obsessed with tiny plastic red houses they and little like... greenhouses and thimbles. Why do they have so many metal thimbles for no reason? You land on a facility and you're like, you're going to have to pay rent for that. <laughs> no? <laughs> I feel like we're talking about two different things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're like super sidetracked today. It's been a while since we've you're talked to people. You know, like it's just been us in the house. So... Uh, and Animal New Horizons. And, and our child. And, yeah, Animal, Animal Crossing. Crossing. So, like, yeah. I mean, stir crazy. Yay! I do like how everyone supposedly has more time, but I'm like, I still have my, which I'm very thankful for, I still have my regular jobs. Like, I don't have any extra hours in the day, necessarily. Right. I don't have, like, time to paint minis and stuff. All right, guys. So, Battle Cry, Fatal Paper Cut. What do you guys think about this particular 
board game, are you guys going to back it? I would say with the mechanics of this game, I'm really excited about it, and I would back this at a regular pledge level, yeah. I think. Because I it's, see that. it's in that $50 range. Well, it's okay, it's $48, and I think that's a good price for it, you know, because you get all the cards, you get all the meeples and everything. I really like the worker placement and then that particular thing sprouting out and then being able to build your own little tiny engine facility going and stuff like that. I think that's a really good, great idea. I think those are going to be a lot of really interesting mechanics for that. And who doesn't want to be science famous? Who doesn't want to be Elon Musk of marine biology? Come on. I think I can honestly say right now with all three games that I would very happily play any of these. I oh, just, definitely. I just don't know if any of them have the hype level that I kind of need right now. And I need like extra hype because of with everything that's everything going on. Everything that's in the going world. on, you need super extra yeah, hype I on need, this. Like, I need something where I feel like <laughs> that I, I'm gonna it's worth getting it even if we might all be dead six months from now. Yeah. And Battle Cry says, Nope, the video was annoying. <laughs> you just you noped an entire game because of the video, <laughs> Battle uh, Cry. We, we noped an entire <laughs> game because of the video. Do you not remember that Which one? one? It was that one that had like all the construction people in it. It was all women, all scantily clad. Oh ridiculous. yeah, that's right. That you was nope that whole game because right. of it. That was a ridiculous video though. That was very sexist. So I was like, nope, I can't stand well, behind a company like that. This may be very sexist to water. No, I don't think that's how that works. Is it merman <laughs> or merpeople? Who knows? <laughs> now this one seems really interesting. I have to say though, this one. It's my money. I'll nope for all kinds of like small reasons. I'll be is, like, this smells like bananas. Nope. This one is not my first choice though. Okay. But I would happily play it, I feel like. Oh, absolutely. Moving on, we have Starlight. Starlight is by Out of My Mind Games. This is for one oh. to four players. It lasts about 30 to 120 minutes. What you're going to be doing on in this game is so you are... So take some time or all the time. Oh, absolutely. Somewhere a little bit of time or so much time that yeah. you're going to need at least two bathroom it's either, breaks. It's either the size of an episode of The Simpsons or a full-length movie. <laughs> it's one of those two. It's one of those two. In this game, you are pilots, and you are piloting around space, which I really enjoy. And you are also able to land on planets and explore them. So this is like, it reminds me of like Star Trek, but like more evasive, where like it's Star Trek, except you're out there trying to blow people up and also like rummage through planets. Yeah, I was feeling more Mandalorian. Just, not real Mandalorian. Yeah, well, same thing. Like Star Wars, right? Not the, Star Trek well, no, and Star Wars are one, not the same. What did you just say? No, okay, okay, no, no, no. Backtrack. S okay, so Star more Star Trek-ish because you are discovering planets as opposed to landing on a bunch of planets that are Unknown. always occupied and known. Like, okay. I feel like you're going All more that. out into the reaches of space that you don't know in this one. I almost just lost it right there for a minute. Sorry, we sorry. Thing. No, I'm just saying as far as like running She's around She's still recovering planets. because she just realized that Mandalorian's a Western. She didn't believe me. Guys, as we started watching The Mandalorian, guys, I'm like, this is a Western. No, and she goes, no, no, I hate Westerns. I'm like, they're, lit they're literally, this episode's called The Gunslinger and they're no. walking through with Western music on like, wow, wow. You know what? The Mandalorian is not a Western. It is. It is not a Western. Space Western. No. No, it it's not. It's not. Guys, guys. If you guys believe, no, you no, guys, no, no, no. Hashtag on. Western if you think the Mandalorian Hold is a Western on. or hashtag not Western. Guys, the Mandalorian is not a Western. She's so Stand wrong. behind me on this. The one guy literally says partner, and I was waiting for him to tip his hat to that lady. <laughs> He's like, come on, partner. Let's go wrestle some no, do backs. No. Yeah. All right. So I really like the fact... <laughs> Tumbleweed goes by, see? It's a Western. Fatal paper cut. No. It's a Western. No. Mandalorian's a Western. That's why I like it so much. I'm like, this is good. It would be it would be a space tumbleweed. Yeah. All right. I guess it would have, like, I don't know, algae on it or what something. Are your, what are your thoughts of this game, Starlight? Oh, I knew this is going to be the one that you're the most excited oh, about. Oh, God. I'm so excited about this, guys. I'm so freaking excited. So it's like, so it's a co-op, if, if I'm correct. Cooperative. It's like a co-op campaign game. Which you has, can play solo. Right. Well, right. Well, I, if you played this solo, I'd be sad. But anyways. Um, <laughs> I am if you're going to keep on talking about oh, space what? westerns. Is it, there, it is. There's an article about the no. showrunner wanting it to have that feel. <laughs> no. Yeah. Whip sounds when people do simple movements. Yes, yes, yes. All right. It's a Western girl. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. No, no, no. Stay, stay, stay. <laughs> so Starlight. Um, so I like the fact that it, it feels like it would be kind of like a co-op, like a Gloomhaven or, or one of those dungeon dungeon crawlers that we've always said. But it is in space. 
And normally that was a big turnoff for me, but I've been really into Mandalorian lately. I know I'm like six months late. <laughs> I'm really into Mandalorian lately, so I'm kind of in that whole Serenity vibe. I'm like, yeah, let's get on the Firefly and let's shoot across the stars and let's. Serenity is a space western. Yes, and so is Mandalorian. No, it is. No. <laughs> but I could see that, and I thought that the tactical movement of the way you actually do your battles and stuff is good with being able to barrel roll and move forward, and like, cause it's got the hex system, which you like. The tactical movement in this game is one of my favorite parts that they added to this game because this is like a space D and D campaign. Well, it's because, almost like Gloomhaven and like Attack Wing, like Star Trek. Right, Attack because Wing, you're getting or to Star move. Wars Attack Wing and just like mixing them together. Or? You're getting to move all of your ships around strategically across the board and plan where you're going and then specify how your ship's going to move and stuff like that and build that up throughout the game. And then you have the D&D &D aspect of going to actual planets and then you're discovering certain things on there and then you're actually upgrading your little people and stuff like that. Yeah, because it it's story-based. It looks freaking amazing, guys. I am insanely excited about this. It has, like, everything I would want in a space game. That story-based portion of it, strategic piloting and stuff like that, and shooting down ships, exploring planets. You can be the Mandalorian in space light. I mean, of course, you know, Disney wouldn't be included. You'd have to name Starlight. yourself something else, yeah. You'd have to name yourself something else, but, I mean... Essentially, you could, right, guys? I'd be the Pandalorian. <laughs> half panda. The Pandalorian. <laughs> half panda, all man. Fatal Paper Cut says, just pledged the 155 tier. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I totally get it. Like, this is my number one, guys. So, normally I'm anti-space games in general because I don't usually like that as much. But I do like the fact that this was a co-op kind of more like a crawl exploration type of game that has cool battles in it, which that stuff is more fun to do with you versus against you because sometimes that stuff gets annoying where you're like rolling dice against each other. Yeah. But this, is, if we're doing it together, then it's like, oh, did we kill that thing? Great. So it's kind of like, well, like, like we were playing Reich Busters, which is very story-based, but putting that into space, it sounds like a very, very interesting to me. That, that hooked me more than normal. Really? Yeah. And this has so much detail to it. Like these character sheets where you can specifically start upgrading your characters and changing stuff and everything. And having, this is your thing right here, having the app, which yeah. is like a story companion app. That was the number one thing you said that like with campaign based systems that you absolutely love is when you have someone yeah. there that is like helping you be immersed well, into that story. Well, I don't know if this story. one actually reads it off. I'm not 100% sure Which on that what, one. Okay. If, I know it's got, it's included with it. Like, it's part of it. I don't know if it reads it off. So, for me, I, I've said that I really enjoy narration. Like, I want a professional or at least a good voice. You want a narrator act, going yes, through. Doing the cards, cause, right? Because, like, me reading the Reichbuster mission is not the same as some grizzled guy that's just like, your mission if you choose to accept. I can't even do the voice. I can't do the voice. My voice is what it is. It's not... It's not epic movie, but it's not the epic epic movie guy voice or anything like that. I would love that narration. Oh, awesome! Okay, so oh. they're in the chat right now. Thank you so much for joining us. It does. We reached that stretch goal, so it does have campaign based narration. So freaking excited about it! I thought that they did. I'm. Uh, I'm just, oh my goodness! Battle, oh my goodness! And Battlecry just keeps backing me up that it's that uh, it a marriage is a between Western and Western samurai, Western and samurai, which archetypes. makes sense because you know a lot of Westerns are samurai archetypes in a way. You could. They can mirror off of each other. That's why they do a really good job of doing like the Seven Samurai, and then they make it into like, you know, they turn that into like a Western. Like they, they I mirror refuse each other. to believe that the Mandalorian is a space Western, guys. I refuse. That's that's where I stand. Really? I just refuse to believe. He literally walks down <laughs> dusty streets with like his with his revolver, but it's a blaster, like all the time. All with right, the fine. Music. All right, fine. <laughs> But if you want to be a Mandalorian, this is the space battle for you guys. A Pandalorian. Right here. Oh, the Pandalorian. A panda, all man. <laughs> I also like the fact that you can't upgrade your ships in this. And yeah, let's not even forget about the dice placement in this. You're rolling your dice, and that makes it, it gives you that, like, I don't like dice rolling games. But this particular game gives you the chance where you can roll it, and then you can place those dice. And I really like the dice placement games, which is... yeah. Completely different. Because then you're making a strategic, uh, you're making a strategic movement based off of the die that rolls. So it then gives, it's like a random, but then you get to decide what to do with the random. Right. You're it okay gives with. You, you just hate all random. A tiny bit of luck on what you have to do. So you have those like, oh my gosh, I can't do these maneuvers because maybe something was in my way. But then you can go ahead and place those dice where you need them and still plan out your turn. Love dice placement games. Like word. 
That, yeah, it's so good. So good, guys. And Fatal Paper Cat says, those are some snazzy dice. One thing we I didn't agree. discuss that really kind of shines through, too, even amidst all this stuff where a lot of Kickstarter campaigns are, like, barely funding, this one This one's overfunded. crazy funding. Yeah. Crazy funding right now, guys. And it's, I, I mean, you can see why. It looks amazing. Space Haven 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and I only say Gloomhaven because that's the one that most people think of when they think of Dungeon Crawl. Space crawls. Haven. This is going to be better, though, than uh, easier to play. Not better, but easier to play in the fact that I feel like dice placement, board gamers are more accepting of than that card system that Gloomhaven oh. has. I've heard a lot of complaints about the card system in Gloomhaven because... It feels board bad. Gamers, Every time I have to burn a card, it feels bad. Yeah, board gamers I don't feel like are super used to that sort of system. No, it's, it you know wasn't natural. Like, I've never played another one like that, like, that I can think of, but... It would be the same as, like, playing D&D &D and using spells, you know? Be, there, you're, you have, like, a limited sort of thing. Yeah, but you don't... You know? Right, I guess. But you don't, like, oh. permanently lose a spell. And then also game trays, guys. Like, yeah. all, all you, you, that this company did was, like, check yes, check yes, check yes. I mean, game trays, story companion-based app, Awesome story, strategic reviewers. movement. Because like, like inside the boxes game didn't even really have like reviewers. That's on it true. At all. That's true. Like fantastic looking miniatures. I, I mean, I'm glad that you told me what the company name was. Cause I just thought it was Oom. Because I was, oh. I was doing all the, <laughs> I was building the games. events and I was tagging everything. I was just tagging like Oom, Oom for everything. Out of mana. I just thought it was Oom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just O O M M. I didn't realize it was out of my mind. Got it. That makes more sense. All right, guys. What do you guys think in the chat about this I feel this like game? for this one, it's more of do you want to do what level you want to do yeah, that versus look if at you want to back it or not. How fantastic that ship looks painted, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm in for this one for sure. Oh. And a little creation kit on there with that? Yeah. Oh, this looks so good, guys. Okay. So this was my number one, if you guys haven't figured it out. This was my number one game. I assume this was going to be your number one. I did definitely. Absolutely. So interesting. You guys are offering the STL files as well as, it's as well. A, it's so if you mess it up, you can repaint it by just Ooh, reprinting out yeah. your own ship. That's, That's what nice. I would do. That was or maybe nice. you want extra bonus ships. This is my display well, ship. This is my play ship. That also allows you to make your own ships, I believe, because you could take those files and then, like, change them, right? I don't know. I don't 3D print. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about that particular thing. I'd I'm be, all in for this, I'd be though. making up stuff. Yeah, actually what it means, if you have the STL files, it means that you can actually sell this game to China without having to worry about copyright. No. That's geez, what that means. I don't know. Jeez, no. Dr. Gory Hog. I don't That's know what that means. horrible. That's horrible. So, game trays. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Fatal Paper Cut says, this looks awesome. I'm not going to lie. I want to look at some of the pledged levels on this here. Because the base por the base price of this is seventy three dollars, I think. Right. Right. Okay. That sounds right. And I want to see what the difference is. Oh no, it's yeah, se about seventy five dollars. Okay. Which is nice. Which is the core game, unlock stretch goals, and then you still have the app and then the the STL files. Right. The STL files are offered for free at either one hundred five or one fifty five. Okay, fantastic. Which fantastic. are the two pledges okay. we're looking at? Because they're off of a different currency. Right, and then let's see here. The Institute. This one here gives you the ships of Starlight, of Starlight miniature expansion, mm -hmm. which gives you more ships then on this one here. Ooh, that one's like so, yeah, I'm going to be doing that one. The 111? I want more ships, yeah. And plus, I don't 3D print or anything. Like, I'm not going to get invested in that. I just want more ships. So, yeah, I'm down with that. All right, I'm going to say I'd back this. Boom. I'd back this. I need, like, a gavel, guys. No. This is a glass <laughs> desk. You do not need a gavel. You'll get so excited. Dr. Glory Hog. You'll break it. I assume we are back, and I just wasn't sure what level. Yeah, but would you back this? Yeah, I think I actually would. Yeah, even though you hate space whoa, stuff. Whoa, whoa, I don't hate space. He I just hates prefer... hates space with extreme passion, guys. The space theme just isn't the most exciting theme. I'm usually pro-Western, <laughs> pro-Earth, pro-Ocean. <laughs> We're going to so give all of our 3D printable stuff to Fatal Paper Cut, apparently, because he has seven printers. So oh, my gosh. You're going to print all of our stuff for us, Fatal Paper Cut. I know, for real. <laughs> I have a buddy who has a 3D printer, and I keep telling him, like, I'm like, I'll send you these things. And he's like, yeah, I'll print it for you. He never does. And Battle Cry says, I have a 3D printer, and I'd still get the ships. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Now, there's nothing bad I can say about this game, honestly. And thanks so much for joining us today. I'm glad this one did so well, too. Oh, absolutely. Like, they are crazy funded right now. You just... It's awesome to see that they're crazy funded when... Everything else is going on. Right. That just shows what a great, great campaign this is. And I wonder if we weren't where we are at right now, how much more funded it would have been. Well, a year or two from now when they decide to reprint and they re go to Kickstarter It'll again. It'll probably get crazy. It'll yeah. probably be even more funded. Or do like... Usually it's like it gets funded the highest the first time and the second time it's not as funded as high but still well. I think this time it'll actually probably fund even better a year from now. Well, and it's super exciting, too, because whenever you get a game that is crazy funded like this, then you have the chance of having more campaigns. Yeah. You know, which I'm excited about. And if they have an app system and everything, it would be very easy for them to throw up some stuff like that. Once people start playing this, there's still, even at, at this 370000 right, there's still a lot of people that aren't going to get on this game right away, and they're going to see that they missed it, and then they're going to freak out and want it. So when oh, it gets yeah, reprinted... Oh, like, yeah, And whenever they open up those late backer things and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, or it gets reprinted. It'll yeah. do really well, I think. All right, guys. So, yeah, I'm backing this one. 100%, like, I have nothing, zero bad to say about this game. And it's a theme I love. Can you I do love. this underwater instead? No. <laughs> no. Not as good underwater, submersible. guys. Submersible. No. submersible. <laughs> no. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Moving <laughs> on, guys. Entire submersible, Mr. Bubble. <laughs> Mr. Bubble. And thank you so much for the people at Starlight joining us today and answering any questions that we might have had about your game. We are super excited to see that you're awesomely funded and everything and that that companion app is going to be offering the uh, narrative version of that and everything with that. We're super excited about that. It just makes it even better. I'm like so excited. All right. For all you Euro gamers out there, <laughs> we have Lions of Lydia. So this is by Bellwether Games. It is for two to four players. It's going to last about 30 to 60 minutes. This is a worker placement bag building system. The bag building portion of this game is really interesting in the fact that you will only have four pieces or four choices in four your bag points, yeah. at a time. So you, the bag building isn't like making it bigger. It's really just about like, okay, I played a yellow one and I don't want to have a yellow one again. I'm going to put a blue one into my bag. And then, you know, you got two blues, a red and a green. This has so much buzz based around it right now. Like a whole bunch of people are like, this is going to be the game of the year sort of stuff happening yeah, with this. It's a yeah, lot of, a bunch of different people's most anticipated lists. Oh, absolutely. And whenever you're taking those meeples out of the bag, you're going to be placing them in different areas of the board. And then you're going to be gathering resources from that. And then with those resources, you're going to be purchasing properties because you are not merchants. You are the people who have the merchants. You're sending the merchants right. out into the world. Yeah, that's not like a new level of like stupid property. rich where you're like, I can't even <laughs> I can't even spend my time to buy the properties. Here, I will send you out. Go, go, fetch my properties for me. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest part of the game. I was like, wait, you're not the merchants in this game? Hold on. <laughs> no, you're not even at that level. You're so wealthy no. that you you got I'll send my people out to purchase you're stuff just, for me. Just go, just go make some money. What do you money need me to me? sign? Oh, I can't yeah, make do some it. Money for Here, me. sign for me. Use my good signing <laughs> hand. I'm so tired. <laughs> I've been eating grapes all day. We're going to have to purchase some properties later. Yeah, this is a it's interesting. A very game. inappropriate time to be a wealthy merchant <laughs> or world wealthy aristocrat. <laughs> the mechanics in it, though, are very, very interesting. Yeah. This game starts at thirty nine dollars. I think for thirty nine dollars, this is well, this is going to be a really interesting euro style game because yeah. there's a lot of euro aspects of this game fetch me my frankincense right it's like you have i like how it's got the four different tracks right based off the different colors and then you have to spend on those tracks in order to buy the properties but you have to like spend your turn to get to the properties and then you can only buy from that particular style of property so if you're spending red you can only get one of the red buildings apparently and then and then like your coins are your wilds of course and then if you overspend then you can flip it and get like better stuff on the back side of it. So there's a lot of that type of stuff going on. Here's the thing with this game. This game is going to be one of those games where you never feel like you have enough, like, meeples or things. Like, you're so limited that you're like, oh, my God, like, if I just had that one last thing or if I just was able to make this one last move, like, that would have made the win. Like, I feel like it's going to be very That's tight fair. and, like, very, very close. Game. Like, very, very, very close, Okay. <laughs> you went Russian? I think I went Italian. That's what? Good. No. Very, I went Russian. Very tight, my friend. Oh, my God. How did you do it? Oh, my God. Let's hear it. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Put a meeple on it. 
Boom. So, yeah, you're going to have so much that you want to do in this game, and then sometimes that meeple isn't going to come up, and you're going to be like, ah, why? And it's going to limit the sort of game that you're going to play, but in a really good way. But not like in a quacks where you feel like it's just mostly luck and pushing your luck. Yeah. Like you, you'll know it's in your bag very easily. Yeah. So, so you know if you miss that, say if you've got two blues in there and you miss that blue, if you're like, I need a blue, you just grab a blue if you can. Now you got three blues in there and you're like, oh, there's a really good chance I'm getting a blue. And then you get your white and you jump off a cliff. What was the bag builder that we played the other day that was good? Because FYI, guys, like, Blitzkrieg? as far as bag builders go, we do not like quacks. Like, I, and Whoa. that's like a... Whoa. I know. Shots fired. <laughs> A lot of I mean, people it's true, but still, like, really like Quacks and Quellenberg, and we just do not like it. We feel like it's too much chance and stuff. And but with this one, it's too lighthearted for us. We're just we're just not that much fun. <laughs> we don't like fun games. I don't feel and... like there's enough control in it. I think that's the same issue you have. Just don't feel like there's enough control. You don't build your bag enough. There's still just. I need ways to like take stuff out of my bag and like Which really customize my bag. I really like, like that in this game that you only have the four meeples in there. So you're always like increasing the chance by twenty five percent. Right, exactly. So the choices that you make in putting stuff in your bag really, really matter, and they make a really big difference with that. And I'm really, really down with that. Like I, re I'm really excited about this. Whenever I saw this game, I was like, oh man, I can see why it's on everybody's best you know, most anticipated lists and stuff. Right, which stuff. I wouldn't have thought having it a small amazing. bag would be the way you wanted to go, but it actually makes a lot of sense because we've played, so Blitzkrieg, which is great. Blitzkrieg is you, good. But sometimes you throw like one of those special yellow tiles in your bag, you just might not ever see it because there's enough tiles in there. Mercado, I feel like you almost go through your whole bag every time. Yeah, like Mercado is good, yeah. But that one, if you throw like one of those black coins in there, the one of the negative coins, oh, like, yeah. you feel like you're going to hit it eventually. Yeah. Like, you're just like, yeah, this is going to happen. I'm going to see it. So, you got to find that, that perfect balance between having enough pieces in there you feel like you're doing something or and not not just having a bag that's just so bloated you're like, it doesn't really matter what I throw in here. It's like the difference between like an eight-sided die versus like a 50-sided die. You know, one of them is going to be like, you kind of have an idea of what you're going to roll. The other one, you have no idea. You're just like, okay, there's 50 different sides. Which, guys, if you haven't played Mercado, I think you can pick it up for like 15 bucks or something that's like that. It's a Cosmos game, right? Yeah, it's a Cosmos game. And you can pick it up. For really inexpensive right now, way better bag builder than Quacks, guys. Like, for real. Super good. <laughs> All right, so with this particular game here, what are you thinking, Dr. Glory Hog? What are you thinking? I think it's a good one. I feel like this is one that would get played a lot. So, like, Starlight is going to be one of those big epic campaign games, which we like. We do like those, and we'll set them down for a weekend, and we'll play it two or three times, and then we'll play it two or three times, like, the next day if we've got a free weekend. So, like, obviously right now is a good time for something like that. Um, this one, though, I think is one that it's a lot easier just to bring out because it shouldn't take that long, right? Isn't this like, is it an over an hour even or is it less than an hour? I don't even know the 30 time to one. 60 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so I feel like this is one you could get out and play with somebody and then go move on to another game, right? So this is like, it's like, oh, it's a good snack. It's a good snack. <laughs> I guess in an hour it's more than a snack, but it's like, it's not like a whole meal where you're like, this is my whole night, right? That Starlight's going to be your whole night probably because once you start playing it and set it up, you're going to want to play it more than once. This is one that you can play, then move on to something else. So I think that's good. I think it's going to get a lot of play because of that. Yeah, this is going to get out to the table far more, and this is going to be more Euro-based gamer or board gamer yeah, based. Yeah, it's, it's friendly looking. Right, exactly. It doesn't look intimidating at all. Right. It just once somebody tells me what the symbols Easy on the cards teach. do, I'm like, oh, okay. But I understand how, I already understand just by watching these little infos, graphics, just like, okay, this is how this works, that's how that works. Okay, this is the main mechanics. I just need to know what the symbols on the cards mean, and then I'm good to go. Which are all great aspects of a really great game. Is that easy to teach feature with complex, like complexity yeah. in it, a little bit of chance and stuff going on it. I mean, it sounds like a very, very sound game. You know what I didn't look up? I didn't look up who made it. Like who is the designer for this game? Because this is a really like a really interesting um, design. Like I like the design of this game a lot, guys. What do you guys think about it? Leave us some notes in the comments and stuff on what you guys think about the game. So, Dr. Glory Hog, then, I mean, would you back this game? This was actually the one I was going to back the most, but you got me oh, kind of really? But you got me kind of pumped up about Starlight. I got you pumped up about Starlight? <laughs> and I kind of feel like if we're going to go all in on Starlight, then we probably don't need this game also. <laughs> but the difference, like we said, was this is a good one to bring out to your table. 
at any time where Starlight is that campaign system. We're going to be playing hardcore together, and... I don't care about other people right now. I can oh. only think about the two of us. <gasps> what? Sorry. What? I can't think about Greg anymore. You He's dead even, to me. You can't even have people over at your house. So we, this is going to... Listen, here's the deal. Greg hasn't called or messaged me in two weeks. <gasps> yeah. How all of a sudden, he? if we're not playing games, How all of a sudden I'm dead to dare him. he? You know what? No, lo no more are we hashtag freeing Greg. Hashtag lock up Greg. <laughs> Hashtag lock up no, Greg. I will, I will admit, though, I'm starting to feel the pinch of only... I'm really looking really hard at the games I feel like have a solid two-player experience because that's just what we've been playing. And I know it's only been like, oh, it's only been a couple weeks, but like I hurt my back before this, so I haven't had any big game nights for weeks. Like It's been like, oh, one per... Like we've had, you know, Game Boy Geek came over and played, or we had Alex come over and played, but he came over to our house. We played a three-player game. We, we haven't had like a six-player game or... We haven't gone to somebody's house that has 20 players and four different tables going. Yeah, but in, it's been much smaller gatherings. So I've just really been like super focused on like two player games. In October of 2020, it may be different. You may be inviting people over to your house again. I can't think that far ahead. <laughs> it's really in October okay. though. That's actually not that far out. Hopefully he's okay otherwise. He is. He's okay otherwise. We haven't we haven't heard anything bad or anything about them. Last time we had heard that they were all in good uh yeah. Good health and everything, guys. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just making jokes because usually he messages a couple times during the week about the Kickstarter show specifically. And then we always try to get together if we can. So here's the thing during this particular Kickstarter, though. They're not offering any sort of late pledges or pledge manager or anything. Like, what you are going to be backing on here, like, that's your final, what is it, your final answer? Oh, this is the designer like, from Coloma. Which Coloma has been getting a lot of I don't want to talk buzz. about Coloma. I don't want to talk about Coloma. Coloma has been getting a lot of good buzz. <laughs> and I pushed hard for it. And she said, nah, I don't want a Western game. And then everyone who we've talked to who's played have been like, oh, yeah, Coloma's good. You should play Coloma. You know what, guys? Okay, Coloma. It's like Mandalorian good. Has had a lot of really, really excellent reviews on it. And now that I know that that is from the designer of Coloma and stuff like that, that just, like, makes it even better. The other thing is that... They've unlocked a bunch of expansion content with this, which is kind of interesting. I wonder how all that's going to work. I'm going to have to look into the expansion portion of this a little bit more because I didn't get a chance to do that. Because now I'm interested to see what the expansions offer with that. Because that's one, two, three, four different expansions. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think, though, with this one, I mean, guys, if you want to get this game, you better get it. Makes sense. You know? And if you if want to get the little Western, wood tokens... If you're a Western fan, you probably should get this Whatever. Game. The base game is 39 and then for the Deluxe, it is only $10 more, which is actually fantastic. Like, I love when they do that because it makes it so easy. It's the wooden little wooden pieces and the Deluxe Upgrade Pack. Didn't the Deluxe Upgrade Pack come with metal coins? I'm going to scroll down, guys. Are they not a for separate buy? Ten, I'm, I'm going to look down because I'm curious now. Dun, dun, scrolling, dun, dun, dun. scrolling. See, deluxe upgrade pack, 24 metal coins. That's not bad. Guys, for 10 bucks? Like, what? 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 10 bucks and they're throwing in metal coins? Who needs diapers and baby formula? We need metal coins. That seems really good, though. I mean, most people... This is an aristocrat game <laughs> at a blue-collar price. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that most companies will usually go ahead and throw the coins on as like an extra add-on like 15 or bucks it'll or be like a $25 increase, you know? Yeah, that's true. For 10 bucks, metal coins, um, yes, please. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Maybe it's maybe like it's because they don't have as many meeples or something, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the game is actually free. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so this is all 100% profit for them. Maybe they got somebody right. to build it for free. I would like to back this game. All three okay. games are fantastic this week, guys. We had an excellent lineup this week for us not having that many things to choose from. Like, our lineup yeah. was still super fantastic Our list was maybe week. like six games or something. So, yeah. it was really, really getting a little dicey. Although, a although, lot of games yeah, we, launched. we had a very thin group to choose from. There were still, like, there were actually four great winners in there. But the first one just did not. Lost Atlantis. And Starlight got was canceled. on our list even last week. I was surprised she didn't pick it last week. So I'm glad that you caught it this week because I was like, oh, how, are you not, how have you not picked that? Well, I wanted to talk about Starlight, but there were too many large ones last week and stuff. Maybe and we try to separate it because we know that not everybody has all the money in the world. We don't. For right, sure. right. Absolutely. And last week was kind of fun. I've been wearing this shirt for two years. Because it was like a. Uh, 2018, yeah. The ones last week were pretty inexpensive. So this week yeah. you have like. 
couple inexpensive ones, one big one, but we've had a couple inexpensive weeks in a row. So you should, guys should be able to splurge on Starlight, okay? <laughs> I'm actually okay with the splurge on Starlight. I think that one's a good one. So a fatal paper cut says, I'm Team Starlight. Yeah, let us know in the comments, guys, which which campaign should, are you most excited about? Should we make like about? a hand signal for Team Starlight? Like, I don't know, is this a star? Like, Team Starlight. No, we're not doing no, it that way? No, no. Okay. What about like, Starlight, Earth, Wind, what? No? You have to do the transformation if you do. I'm not thinking about Sailor Moon. I'm thinking about right. Captain Planet. Either Earth, way, either way, you have to do the sun, transformation. Fire, if you can't, vegetables, if you Earth. can't do the transformation, you can't do it. With your powers combined, <laughs> I am Captain Sea Octopus. <laughs> no. Thanks so much again for for hanging out with us today, the people over at Starlight. We really appreciate that and answering our questions. Like Thank that's always you awesome for being on this show. So, Dr. Glory Hog, what was your favorite? I was actually going for this Lions of Lydia. Yeah. La Dona, if you will. <laughs> La Dona. She was Lydia when I met her in high school. Yeah. But I'm actually more sold on Starlight after talking to you. You got me you got me all pumped, pumped on Starlight. Pumped up for Starlight? Yeah. It was right up your alley except for the space theme of it. Yeah. I can ignore one aspect of theme you know, if I like a thing. I don't, you know, watch Mandalorian <laughs> and go, oh, it's a Western. And then, like, just stop watching it like you. And Battle Cry says, I'll be looking at Starlight more. Absolutely. Yeah. So... I my two favorites of this were Starlight, of course, my number one, and then Lines of Lydia as well. And I they're think... so, such different games. Like, you kind of feel like you can't compare the two of them. No, they are. They're two completely different games. One's going to appeal more to, like, RPG RPGers, Ameritrashers, or people who are really invested in those campaign-based right, systems. Exploration games. And the other ones are going to apply more to, like, drier Euro, Euro players. So like Greg. Dry and Oki Euro. Yeah, like the Oki Dry Euro players like Greg. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Who have like, they're like, hmm. See, I want to play Aquanauts though too. This well, yeah. Bad. I mean. Didn't I want all games, want all, all the, games all the Kickstarters. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did last week. Oh. <laughs> I remember I know for sure I wanted Lawyer Up. Oh, you two are pretty hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> it's almost like we've been we drinking, try. but we haven't. I promise. I'm at work. It's still. in the middle of the day. You For can't another be drinking. four hours, I have oh, more work. God. Why do you got to work so much? I guess maybe to pay the bills. That probably helps. We can't and all buy just, Kickstarters. We can't all just sit home and eat bonbons. Buy all day. Kickstarters. Duh. We got to gotta get that. that cash to buy some Kickstarters. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining we us need today. That Animal Crossing money. Oh, need those for real. bells. Like, need some bells. 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 So later in the week, what are we going to be doing? We are doing, oh, we're going to play Welcome To on Monday. Welcome To. And it's Glory Hound versus the world. Everybody who has a copy who's on that stream <laughs> can play against us and see who gets the highest score out of everybody. And whoever wins gets to rub it in her face. That's the wow, prize. Wow, wow. You'd be like, I'm sorry, are you your Glory Hound? You're the loser of Welcome To? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know. I'm a winner. I've never actually talked to a loser before. I'm so high up on this pedestal that I've never seen the people beneath no, me. No, no. Like so we're going to play you Welcome To. You challenge the world, you're going to get it. You reap what you sow. You don't actually need a copy of it. You just need a board. Like, you just need one of those little yeah, tear-off sheets. Yeah, one of the sheets. Yeah, because we'll have everything else for but you guys. you could probably print one off somewhere, I'm Fatal, sure, too. Fatal Paper Cut says, can't sit at home and watch watch space westerns all day duh yeah for real some of us have to work she works too she just has a different type of job we're also going to be playing taverns of tiefen hall on taverns of tiefen hall Sunday? right so you're going to be Sunday, filling yeah. the beers and i'm going to be singing the songs it's going to be amazing we should we should have like beers and stuff when we play that and be all taverny what do you guys think if you just want to drink a beer on live stream just do oh, okay. it you don't have to sorry. make an excuse sorry oh <laughs> well, we should be all western uh western space Space theme. Space they, theme. They Western drink, space theme. They drink. Uh, they drink Blue Moon cider uh, on stream. I don't think That's so. I don't do. think so. And hopefully, there's a Blood Bowl league, guys, that we're going to be playing in here soon. Yeah, so. I'm actually playing in a Blood Bowl league online right now off a of Steam, and so far I am undefeated our, in one match. One of one our match. local game stores is hosting a Blood Bowl league, and I believe I'm going to stream that because I love freaking Blood Bowl. I'm so excited. So I think I might like build teams and stuff like that and hang out with you guys and show you guys all about that. I don't know if anybody has actually played Blood Bowl before, but it's a fantastic game. Let me know in the comments if you have. And I have. Uh, what else? I, I think that's I think that's about it for now. Should I message you in the comments? What else? Anything else? I don't know. Oh, and oh, oh. obviously we're on YouTube only, guys. And like and subscribe and ring that bell for more content and everything. So whenever we do go live, you can get three to five notifications as we're testing out our stream stuff. <laughs>
Yeah, so Stegmeyer made a roll and write that he's been uh, that he's been posting about and stuff. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think it's free to play. Roll and write. He's been playing every day and making changes oh, okay. to it he's as he goes along. He's going through it like a like a so designer's designer testing. Yeah, sort of thing. like a designer's diary. Is it Scythe the Roll and Write? Because no. if it's not Scythe the Roll and Write, I don't want to play it. Wow. Because I want Scythe the Roll and Write, and I've mentioned it to him before, and that's what I want. I want Scythe the Roll and Write, guys. Back me up on that. So say. At Jamie Stegmeyer, at Gloryhound wants, scythe the roll and write, make it happen, please. <laughs> That's what I need in my life, okay? Hashtag pass Sil the roll and rights. Silver Liam Hashtag says, Hashtag make it a real game. Blood Bowl is amazing. See, and you know what? We can always ask too if we want to open it up to have people from our audience on there. If you have Blood Bowl 2 on Steam, yeah. like let us know and we'll get you into we'll get you into there. And then you can face off against Dr. Glory Hog and Glory Hound. It'll be lose. amazing. I play the Scranton and Shredders. It's a bunch of orcs. We've got <laughs> Wham Bam. Thank you, Pam. You've got, uh, what are the names? I have all kinds of crazy names. Dwight the Blight. Yeah, you got a lot of good names. Slim Jim. And thank you for everybody that showed up and hung out with us today. We really appreciate you guys hanging out and talking about Kickstarters with us. We always appreciate your opinions because this is a collective environment and kind of if somebody notices something specific on here, you can let us know and then we can bring in like the publishers and stuff. It makes it a really awesome environment to talk to everybody on, like Road, on. Roadkill Meredith. Toby, the oh worst. Oh my God. Oh my God. All the best office, office puns. Somebody else is the worst right now. So I'm oh just God. saying. I'm just da, saying. Da, da, <laughs> Other than that, da, da, we da, da, will da, see you guys all later. Da, da, Hashtag da, 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 da. Mandalorian is not a space western. It That's is. it.